video from, from Rowan Lorian, who's been um, he's been getting back into the research side of things again. And uh, it deals with the, the, the standing of state and federal police in Australia and how they stand today. Um, I've also come across this research when I was trying to find the, um, the Queensland Police Service and we discovered that it was a non-organisation which leaves each and every Queensland police officer um, fending basically for themselves or as a, as a private foreign mercenary group. Uh, we're not sure who they really serve because if the Queensland Police Service is registered as a non-organisation on Dun & Bradstreet, then it makes us, um, th there's basically no one to sue uh, if, if something goes wrong or, or if they cause some form of damage. Uh, this is what Rowan is starting to find out with uh, New South Wales Police. So I'm going to leave you with, uh, with Rowan. It's, it's good to see Rowan again. And he's back into, into, the, um, into the researching. He, he never really stopped, but uh, because of this research that we're doing, both Rowan and I have uh, felt the full force of a corrupt uh, government or a corrupt entity uh, passing themselves off to be the Commonwealth of Australia or the, the, Queen, the Queensland or the, the state or federal police of Australia. And of course we've, um, we've witnessed and witnessed the brutal side of, the, uh, of their organisation and Rowan really did witness it. When he spent six months in prison, he had, uh, they, they, he had 18 shifts within that six months to contend with. I think we know why, because I think that as they tried to access the city key or the SESTA key via trust, um, because they couldn't establish that Rowan accepted the false name with the surname or the incorporated name, it placed the prison in a position where they needed the consent to access the trust. And if they didn't have the consent to access the trust, well then they can't plunder Rowan's estate in order, in order to keep him in prison and then charge him whatever they charge to give you a crappy room in a prison and some shit food. <laughs> uh, there was also, is confronted with the magistrate, Holmes, that has, has put him in, that uh, that magistrate has already been investigated for his high amount of uh, imprisonments and also when Rowan was in prison he uh, met people that uh, were very aware or did sell him drugs so he may be a compromised magistrate and that might be what's causing him to create such a high imprisonment rate for the Queensland for, for the New South Wales Police uh, Department or the New South Wales Police Entity whatever it is so here's Rowan it's it's good to see him back and I hope to see more videos of uh, Rowan's incredible research <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome uh, back. Sorry about the uh, hiatus. I'm sure you all knew what happened. Um, just, it's not going to stop me by the way. I'm going to keep going with this. Um, some things I want to talk to you about guys. Uh, New South Wales Police are part of either a private military or the US military, which in itself may be private. Um, the operation of the laws of Australia are very easy to work out that the New South Wales Police are a private military um, and I want to explain that to you um, with reference so that you can actually look it up and check it out yourselves. So uh, Article 9 of the Corporations Act 2001, ASIC were nice enough to tell me that any company, any entity that's registered overseas is considered by ASIC or by the law of Australia a foreign company. There are other ways to do it, but that's a nice, simple way, and that's what Australia has adopted. So, New South Wales Police are a body corporate, which is normally used to run a set of units. Um, that was the decision was uh, work cover New South Wales Inspector Kilty v Crowning Road New South Wales New South Wales Police. I don't know the date of that one, but that was it was held that New South Wales Police are a body corporate. Now there's uh, an interesting maxim, well there's a couple of interesting maxims, uh, similar with similar and dissimilar things ought not to be joined. 
So the second one is actually in the Bible, which is 2 Corinthians 6.14. It's also in Black's Law. So it's a fairly heavy duty one. So how does a body corporate get jurisdiction with you? Um, considering the law says it can't, you know, a man could contract with a man, uh, corporation with a corporation. That's why they need you to hold the all capitals that uh, Rom has done all the research on. I've worked out what that is now. We had a little, it's, it's gone through sort of um, a bit of an evolution. So it started out, we found the glossa. Then we found, Ameri well, we found American Sign Language at the same time. Then we worked out, okay, so it's looking like Dog Latin. It's not quite Dog Latin and it's not quite American Sign Language. American Sign Language would be hyphenated. It's got, if it's hyphenated, it, the Dog Latin isn't hyphenated, but the words would be in Latin. So technically not Dog Latin. Um, I can tell you what it is. Uh, right down to the letter now, it's a word mark. A word mark is a trademark made out of text. There's a thing called a letter mark, which is a letter used as a trademark. And word mark is a number of letters. Just Google it, it's really easy to find. Um, and with the New South Wales Police, they've got to get you to hold this. This is why they've got to serve you with the paperwork. I had New South Wales Police from Newtown through the paperwork at my head the other day uh, to try and get me to hold uh, the all capitals. Because it's a picture, it's not a word, it's not anything. and. A book I want to reference uh, is this one. Guys, I've seen that online up to $1,200 US and I've read it and I know why. This is incredible. This tells you exactly what's going on, um, why they're doing what they're doing. So they're abusing a few things. They're abusing legal fictions. They're abusing the doctrine of presumptions and they're abusing uh, language and proper nouns and names. Um, back to them being so uh, private soldiers. So Article 9. It says anyone, anything that's registered overseas is foreign. Very simple. We know the Commonwealth of Australia is registered overseas, 805157. Now, New South Wales Police have an ABN. They are registered to the Commonwealth as a, a subsidiary entity of that. So, therefore, if the Commonwealth is foreign, the Commonwealth of Australia, in all capital letters, not the constitutional one, we're not using the constitutional one, that's a separate entity. I brought that up with the High Court, and they're refusing to even give me a reason why they're not going to hear the matter. Um, just point blank. In fact, I didn't even stamp the paperwork properly. Talk about um, more bad grammar. <laughs> they had to put this little stamp on it and the middle of it was all missing. Uh, so, um, and Justice Virginia Bell signed it, but she didn't sign anything because you can't read it because it's not there. And then they sent me a letter going, well, this is what it does say. I said, well, no, it's not on there. It has to be on there. This is law. So um, I think we freaked the High Court out a little bit. Um, another thing I want you to have a look at, guys, is irregular military. So you've got your regular military. The irregular military uses either irregular tactics or irregular um, sort of operations. Part of the irregular military, if you go to Wikipedia, is the paramilitary. Isn't a part of the irregular military. So a paramilitary is the police. Now these police, uh, we can trace the registration directly to the Commonwealth, which we can trace directly to the US Federal Reserve. It's not hard. So our police are a paramilitary, which means they're an irregular military. Uh, and Article 9 of the um, Corporations Act 2001 says they're foreign. So there you go, they're foreign. So the tactics, this is interesting guys, an irregular military uses irregular tactics, something that's not standard military operations, you know, they don't just go out and shoot people. So what these people are doing, these are actually not police, they're soldiers, they're American soldiers, um, albeit they're Australian nationality, they've given that up, they've become agents of the US, uh, US military via the US Fe Federal Reserve, so it's quite possibly a private military. And what they do is they, they commit a couple of war crimes. If you want to have a look at the uh, Rome Statute or have a look at the Red Cross, they've got a good war crimes website. Um, they dress as New South Wales Police, so they're deceptive in their uniforms. So basically they've come, they've been employed by America to wear uniforms to make them look like they're um, Australian police, even though they're US soldiers carrying out work for the US. And this is why they're using the word marks, because the word marks are the um, copyright of the US Federal Reserve. They, they create them um, through the birth certificates, because um, New South Wales birth deaths and marriages is an international standard organization rated company so it can issue international documents which it does which is your birth certificate um, and you can have a look at ROM's 
uh, latest incredible video on the birth certificates and how they work. But basically, that's how that's how it's done. They get you, they give you the wrong one. So the police, <laughs> by the action of the uh, uh, Article Nine of the Corporations Act, and there's also another one I want you to have a look at, which is the Foreign State Communities Act 1985, which is Commonwealth Act Part One, uh, heading preliminary Part Three, interpretations, subsection one. So that talk, have a look, just or just have a look in the. Um, interpretations. Military property uh, under that, so that's uh, part A, a ship of war, a government yacht, a patrol vessel, a police or customs vessel, a hospital ship, a defence force, supply ship or an auxiliary vessel being a ship or vessel at the relevant times is operated by a foreign state. That's a birth certificate. Um, puts you into citizenship. US private military citizenship. You, you become the soldier. Uh, part B under military property means uh, not being a ship or vessel that is being used in connection with military activities under the control of military authority or defence agency for military or defence purposes. Oh, there you go. So part B could be anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's also one I want you to have a look at, which is separate entity. Where are we? Sorry, guys. Might be a sec. Up. In relation to a foreign state, means a natural person other than an Australian citizen or a body corporate or corporation soul other than a body corporate or corporation soul that has been established by or under the law of Australia, which there isn't any law of Australia, guys, we're using the US. This is, I'll get to that. An agent or an instrumentality of a foreign state and is not a department or organ of the executive government of the foreign state. So part A, I guess under that, says that the police, um, because they're registered to a foreign corporation, they're, that's it, they're, they're foreign, they're not Australian. And also the judiciary, so all the courts, so New South Wales, the local, the district and the supreme, the, there's, when you walk in, that guy sitting there is not a judge or a justice or a magistrate, he's a soldier. He's dressing and pretending to be a magistrate, judge or justice. Uh, as part of the irregular military operations, and that is treason, right there. And I said that court, and that that transcript, I didn't get given that when I tried to appeal it all and get the fuck out. They um, they they just you know they do what they want. So they are military guys. They're the police. Uh, U.S. soldiers. Um, they're partaking in military operations. So the war crimes. So they're wearing. They're not wearing US uniforms, they don't have US flags on them. They're wearing um, basically what you would call a New South Wales uniform, which is deceptive because of who they are and who they work for. They've given up their nationality to get US citizenship. Uh, and I don't even know they've done it. The other war crime, they're using um, hollow point ammunition uh, because they're a paramilitary operation that says directly that they're part of the military, be it irregular military, still commit war crimes and using hollow point ammunition is a war crime. Um, slavery, because they're forcing you to do it. If you try and say no to those people, they come and throw it at your head, apparently. And if you don't turn up to court, because it's not your name and it's not your trademark, <laughs> they'll, uh, they'll drag you in. It's very simple. So that was what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, yeah, so the word mark, guys, have a look at that. That is, a, I think that's, that's the most accurate thing that I can find of the all capital text and what it is. It's definitely not a name. I got told in court that I didn't prove my, I didn't prove it. So there obviously there's no facts. I mean, you know, fuck. feels like a fact to me. So that apparently doesn't mean anything. And the Privacy Act 1988 doesn't mean anything. And the Foreign State Immunities Act 1985 Commonwealth doesn't mean anything. So I think they're, they're just freaking out because they're really losing the fight on this one. I can't get hide and hair out of anybody. And, when I do, it's always an answer to another, a different fic, fictition, uh, fiction. Sorry, um, I want to read you something out of this book, guys. Is what they? Why would they use a legal fiction in this way? If I can just find that. So what? Well, sorry, my page. So the legal fiction book says, "Why would you do this?" Is because it gives you an authority to take over the legislative 
uh, branch of the government without having to do it. The Australian Constitution requires a referendum to change it. So in a, in a decision called Sue v Hill in 1999, which is based on Section 41 of the Australian Constitution, they said that the Queen of Australia is the one you can't... If you're uh, sworn to the Queen of England, uh, you, you're, you can't sit in Parliament. So, but the Australian Constitution said that's the only Queen you can sit under is the Queen of the United Kingdom and Ireland. So the Queen of Australia is a different office to the Queen of the United Kingdom and Ireland, and the High Court have decided that it's the Queen of Australia, regardless of the fact that the Constitution does not say that twice. It says the opposite, the Queen of the United Kingdom. Uh, how they're getting around this, guys, is instead of having a referendum where everybody agreed, they got everybody into an individual contract with your driver's license, your birth certificate, all that stuff that you already know about. Um, and basically what the High Court has done is it's acted not as the High Court, it's acted as the quasi-military, uh, deceptively named High Court in all capitals with a uh, very similar word mark to the entity named in the Constitution, which is the High Court of Australia. They're two different High Courts, one proper noun, one all capitals. And that's the all capitals American one is making these decisions. And that's how, <laughs> and it's called legislating uh, from the bench and it's illegal. They can't do it. So the only way that this could be legal is if you have consent. Now, with legal fictions, the only way legal fiction, once again, this book, guys, 1200 bucks online or find a copy, I got that one for $300 Australian, tells you that a legal fiction can only exist, and there's also some maxims on it, can only exist if you consent. So you've got to start looking at how you consented. Did you take the documents? Did you apply for them? Did you call yourself by your word mark, which is a species of trademark? Um, the Privacy Act is interesting. Um, I'll take you to that. It says that, um, okay, so the Privacy Act 1988, Part 2, Interpretations, Division 1, General Definitions, Number 6, Interpretations, Brackets Number 1. In this Act, unless the contrary intention appears, Identifier, so go down to Identifier once you've found that. So part, bring up Privacy Act 1988, go to Interpretations in Part 2. There's a heading there, Division 1, General Definitions. Go down to Identifier. Identifier of an individual means a number, letter or symbol or a combination of any of those or all of those things that is used to identify or to verify the identity of an individual but does not include, here's, where you, here's the kicker, lowercase a in brackets, the individual's name. So the law is telling you that you can have a combination of letters that is identifying information that is not a name. And it could be the exact same letters of your name, how do they change it with the case? They put it in the uh, all capitals. So then it becomes, well, let's think about it. What sort of, what's artwork that we use to identify things? It's a trademark, isn't it? And a subspecies of trademark is a word mark. It is a picture, it's not a word. A word has meaning. This says that the only way that you can put meaning to a legal fiction is by the author. So you have to ask whoever wrote those documents out, what does that mean? You know, they'll say you. You in what capacity? You as a representative of a corporation, you as a military ship, you as you know, a soldier. Um, oh, and that's the other war crime you commit, is that we then become involved in a war against Australia um, and force conscription. And the list just goes on with the war crimes they're committing. I'll, I'll put this to the ICC. I'm still waiting for a response. Um, if anybody's interested and, you know, I get killed or something in the meantime, the file number is otp-cr-371 forward slash 18. Um, illegal fiction, guys, doesn't exist. The, the law couldn't work without them. Um, they're, they're being called the fraud <laughs> of law. Illegal fiction becomes a lie when it's not disclosed. And I know a few people commenting on ROM stuff, how can we call this disclosure um, when we haven't been told? And I would agree with that. Um, they're, but they, they're gonna stick to their guns and go, well, it's here, we've disclosed everything. It's not our fault that you don't know the law or how to read your own name. Um, and they probably have a point there. But in saying that, if you ask them, they can't lie because then the legal fiction becomes a lie and that becomes false documents, fraud, uttering, all those crimes. 
So this is why we can't, no one can get any answers. And I've, a lot of researchers, you, know, you write to your MPs, you write to everybody, and ah, I'm not, uh, not answering it or fob you off or whatever, try and create a, a new legal fiction to write back to. And the other thing they're using is presumptions. And to get rid of a presumption, you put in a fact. There we go, you've seen the other styles manuals, the Australian government one, the Oxford, this one, they're facts. This is how we do it. Guys, custom law can become fact. Uh, this system is how in 73, so the customer writing your name prior to that was with a proper noun with initial capital letters, not the full caps, or the all caps, I should say. Full caps is one capital letter for each word. Um, all caps is completely capitalised. So, guys, that's it. There's a good cartoon styles manual. Ah, oh, the other thing. The birth certificate has the new ones. They have the boxes on them. Uh, if you have a look at ROMs, I don't think they have the boxes as such. Those boxes are cartoon comic book <laughs> boxes. That, that's that's the comic book styles manual. If you want to have a look into it, have a look at illustrative text by Sarah Witty. Um, and it tells you about the text being uh, illustrative text. So it's a picture of a letter. It's not a letter as part of a word. That's the difference. And even Australian legislation says so. In the Privacy Act 90, you know, it had to be somewhere. They had to have this system in because if it wasn't, they'd just be committing treason outright. At least this way, they don't commit treason up and, or slavery or fraud or <laughs> any of those crimes up until you, you stop consenting. And you are consenting. So as soon as you willfully pull your consent, because uh, legal fictions are equity, equity is a contract, contracts require free um, and willing consent. And this is where I've got them because I've not consented to the contract and they forced me into it. It's like you're walking down the street and someone grabs you and says, right now you work for McDonald's and if you don't make the hamburgers right, we're gonna lock you up. Oh, by the way, we're not paying you. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. It's all done through the US Federal Reserve as part of a mixed war. Not, so it's a private war, because I don't think the US military is a public military, I think it's a private one. I don't even know whether we're part of that particular military arm. It does look like we are, but we could just be a separate arm. The police could be in a separate army on their own. Um, I don't know the exact uh, way that they've registered these things. They, um, so it's a private war, it's also a mixed war. A mixed war is a war of, of an army against an individual, or one. <laughs> so if you're feeling a bit outnumbered and a bit overwhelmed, yeah, that's exactly why, because you know, you've got a whole army against you in this mixed war. And they haven't declared war, but that doesn't matter because you're in a state of war. Law is suspended in a state of war. One thing that's not suspended in this state of war, considering where you go through the US, is the Lever Code. Article 4 says they can't do anything to us. If we don't do anything to them, they can't do anything. And that's why I'm in the ICC. Uh, we'll see what the International Criminal Court says about it. They may do nothing. Who knows? But I just wanted to get you up to speed. I don't think there's anything else. And um, yeah, have a look under Separate Entity in the Foreign States Immunities Act. Guys, read all this stuff yourself, don't take my word for it, and have a look at Wordmark, the regular military, that's all there. So the New South Wales Police are US, if nothing else, they're definitely US Federal Reserve soldiers uh, using hollow point ammunition, wearing uniforms that they shouldn't be wearing. So, Okay guys, I'll leave you at that and um, we'll get this video up and hopefully we'll get somewhere with us. It does seem to be getting some um, traction around the world, by the way. I looked at the Bilderberg website, they don't give away much, but one of their topics for discussion was <laughs> the post-truth world. And I think it might be this, that people are starting to work out that they're being conned with word marks into a military and uh, being forced to fight against their own, own country. Everyone who's joined the police is an absolute traitor and should be shot, uh, according to the operation of the laws of the Commonwealth. Um, it's my opinion. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Uh, guys, if you do want to argue with me, put some comments up, but please just make sure everything's referenced so I can go off and have a read. Um, I never claim to be right. I'm just putting out information and referencing it as best I can so you guys can have a look. And hopefully I'll talk to you soon. Just.